last long battle with the sea, there can only be one winner. Oh dear. For skippers Jimmy Bucken and Sandy Watt, a time of reckoning. Seven, increasing severe gale nine later, occasionally storm ten. South of zero. With storms approaching in the North Sea, the fishing boat Fruitful Harvest heads for home. Forties to easterly six to gale eight, occasionally severe gale nine, rain then showers. A winter of bad weather and months of poor fishing have tested skipper Sandy Watt to the limit. He can't afford to take chances with his 30-year-old boat. Probably should have replaced the vessel 10 years ago, but without having a son coming behind me, I just felt maybe we'll just have to stick with what we've got till we're, uh, we'll hang up our boots. Skipper of the Amity is Sandy's best friend, Jimmy Buck. Jimmy's been through the winter storms too. The sea is a very powerful force. As a skipper and a fisherman, I have the greatest respect for the sea because so much of my colleagues have perished there. And you don't want to be one of them. Forecasts warn Jimmy when bad weather's approaching. Other encounters at sea are less predictable. Hello, Amity, Amity. Fishery inspectors can board fishing boats without warning. Their job is to enforce the laws protecting fish stocks. They're looking for boats that break the rules. Go get that log book up to date before he boards. And with us being so busy, I ain't time to make it up yet. Hold on board, why? Jimmy must account for everything he's caught. The books and the catch must tally exactly. 46 plus 120. 14, 15, 16. One mistake would be enough to get Jimmy prosecuted and the amity impounded. The inspection in the hold and what's in the hold tallies with what's in the logbook. Over. Everything is in order on Jimmy's boat. Jimmy's livelihood is prawns, and right now, prawns are plentiful. He sold some of his prawns to an Italian restaurant in Aberdeen. Jimmy and Sandy are out for the evening, along with their wives, Irene and Liz. The main challenge here is to get my friend Sandy to eat it. <laughs> yep, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It tastes half as good as it looks, will be okay. It's only Jimmy who catches the prawns. Sandy fishes for haddock. Lately, it's not been going well, but he hasn't lost his passion for the sea. I absolutely love the fishing. I mean, anything to do with fishing, it's just, I love my job. Couldn't have seen myself doing anything else. You just, when you get a good haul, it's just, just nothing like it. Just fantastic. It just hasn't been happening for us since last 10 months, so, <laughs> but it's got to change. Sandy may not have caught much in recent times, but any skipper knows that fishing goes in cycles. Some years are good, and some are bad. The trick is knowing how to tough out the bad years. It wasn't long ago that Sandy was catching ten times more fish than this. Do 
2004, eh? There was an unbelievable amount of fish about 2004. 7th of December 2004. First haul, 172 boxes. Second haul, 56 boxes. Third haul, 62 boxes. Away home, 291. For three hauls. That's the way to go to sea. 2nd of December 2004. First haul, 229. Second haul, 49. Third haul, 40. Away in 360 boxes. That's an unbelievable amount of fish. I've never seen that before, and I possibly won't see that again. Jimmy's boat, the Amity, is only 30 miles from Sandy, and he just can't stop catching prawns. It's a very, very big haul there today. We're going to be on deck all day again. <laughs> I've never seen a like this before. The crew have had little sleep in three days of dealing with the huge holes of prawns. Jimmy has got to make the most of his luck. Next week we come out here, the sun will be high, we can be a strong tide, and we can do the same too. And we're lucky if we get enough prawns to feed the crew. But as for now, fishing bonanza. Enough prawns in there to feed all of Africa, I would say. Kevin is the first mate, Jimmy's right-hand man. So far, he's happy with the skipper's decisions. We'll keep going the way we're going anyways. We'll have the boat full in another two days. So that's, that's good for all. Especially Jimmy. Jimmy's very happy. Times are not so good aboard the fruitful harvest. There's not much haddock, and what little there is, is small. No, the boat's problems haven't deterred the youngest crewman. Just ever since I've been a boy again, I've, I've always wanted to go to sea and get my, my, my daughter had a fishing boat, so I've got a, I've, I've always I've always wanted to, um, just always wanted to be a skipper as well, again, just to go a business in the fishing again. 18 year old John Duncan Campbell is one of the few young men in Peterhead who still choose to go to sea. Most of my friends are at university or college or that, but they think I'm a bit dark for really thin. And I I'm not sure if they make very good fishermen. But uh, I think they think they think I'm daft about it. It's quite an important job this because okay, this will depend this this will determine how much what, what price you'll get for your fish. So I just try and straighten all the fish up, then put a layer another layer of ice. Some some lads just chuck chuck a fish into into the box anyway anyway they want really. But I like to make sure it's straight and I try to mark it as bony as possible. I, well, there you go, it's a, jar, a jar box of fish there. It's beautiful. It's still good times for the Amity. Amongst the prawns, there are other rich pickings. Have the hand of it, boys. Prime hand of it. Prime what? 50 or 60 prawns up there. Another one over there as well. They're just beauties. Ah, the weight! The weight of the water. Ah. Oh, halibut's worth about a hundred quid. Go, go 
we're jumping on his boogie. On the fruitful harvest, Sandy wants to help John all that he can. He decides it's time to give his deckhand a chance to skipper the boat. That's why I'm last night in my bed and I just had a thought. I'll maybe let you have a chance to, sh to shoot the gear. I do it now for a whole or two today to see if, if you're happy enough uh, doing that just to get a bit of experience. Oh uh, yeah, that'll be sport only. Like, that'll be brilliant. Like. The more experience you can get in the better. If you're happy to do it, well, that's, that's good. At least if we don't catch any fish, that will uh, we'll know who to blame. Okay. When the skipper out of the picture, John will be in total control of Sandy's pride and joy. Okay, we're cool. Right. Right, so, if you didn't, Sonny! Right here. <laughs> well, we'll just stand uh, shoot him in it in four or five minutes. So I haven't done that for years. Hope I don't make a blunder. John's job is to keep the boat going at the right speed and in the right direction. Sandy and the crew make sure the nets leave the boat correctly. Leave it. Oh, hit it back. for Sandy to stop being the skipper. The nets have been shot successfully. Could have, could have gone a lot worse, I suppose. So it was alright. Cool, I managed, I'm just. <laughs> oh, I was a bit nervous, but you, you forget. <clears throat> I forgot about all the, all the nervousness like you said the, 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 I suppose. John's got the first part of the job done, but there's a lot still to go. On the Amity, another surprise visitor. Catfish. They're very sharp teeth on them. Look at that. I suppose you could a proper one, a proper fish monger, right? Uh, I've never really seen a catfish for sale. Like, I think if somebody seen that, I think they'd pass by it. I don't think they'd buy it. Would you eat catfish? Ah! It's time to hook the marker boy back on board. They can't retrieve the nets without getting this right. It looks like Sonny's got to be, got to be throwing a creeper, so uh, he's saying he's saying he hasn't been doing it for a long time, so we'll, we'll let you see what happens. John has to steer the boat perfectly to give Sandy any chance of recovering the mark. John! You're going down! Controlling the boat, John has to allow for the drift of the marker boy. John 
song gets its spot on. Oh, and went all right, so could have gone a lot worse. Sandy is just about coping with life as a deckhand. So far, so good for John in his new job, but the riskiest bit, hauling in the nets, is yet to come. I think this, this might be a bit harder, I think, just because there's a... Uh, You've got to watch for a net going into the propeller, so... And if, if that happens, that will be a nightmare. Like all fuss mates, Kevin has a special relationship with his skipper. I've been with Jimmy the last seven years, eight years maybe. He's easy going, Jimmy's very easy going, he doesn't shout or ball. That's why he's got the same crew with him for a lot of years. Other boats I see crew changing all the time. It's whether they're lazy or else the skipper is a bit of a pain, it's one or the other. It's the odd time he might get excited about something, but we'll just shout back at him as well. He doesn't get it all his way all the time. Jimmy's just a very nice guy. He had a, a brief encounter when he left for three months, went to another boat, and he didn't like it. And it was just by chance I met his wife and she said when they got to party, and I said, well, my phone's always there, and the next week he phoned me and he'd come back. I admire him for doing that, because to leave someone and then come back shows that he wants to work for you. It has all to do with taking a gamble in life. And Jimmy took that gamble, same as any other skipper they did. It worked for them. So will I take that gamble? I don't think I've got the confidence in myself to be in the wheelhouse. It's time to haul in the catch on Fruitful Harvest. If John gets this wrong, the nets could foul the propeller and leave the boat stranded. I just think you've got to try and get a win uh, at this side, my dude, so try and get a mare, okay? No bad way, okay? Oh, so I'm going to do it because fatigue sits in. See if you have any other volunteers for it. Yes. No, just take it off a slow, it ain't. Ten turns a minute, but sometimes we go fast and we go see him, if you let Paul do it. But just stick it for a deep slow, Ken. You've got a lot of things to look out for, Ken. I can let us break right off and the, the reel would spin so fast that the, the, the rope would go like over the side of the would go over the side of the, the, the reel itself. Ken, there's just so much things there's so much things you could you could do and it could it, it could go pear shaped, Ken. I've got to try and do it exactly the way if it's on his tilt now, do you get? If I don't know, I don't know, I'll just end up in a mess. The nets are getting close to the propeller. This is where it could all go wrong. as a first-time skipper. He's made no mistakes. I'm, I'm glad nothing went wrong, Ken, because that would have been a disaster, but yeah, no, nothing, nothing's went wrong, so I'm, I'm quite pleased, like. <laughs> He'll go to his bed tonight and I'll think maybe a bit more about it. Maybe, maybe one day I won't find it so funny if it does go fashion as getting a good laugh at the skipper. <laughs> Oh, you, no, no, you just blab as you're going along, so he'll, uh, 
know what, you know what, quite a lot today. I thought a lot just about the just a bit of what it, what it did, how it handles and just how are the, how are the machinery handles can. Can so I've learned a fear from what they did. It's not easy. It's, it's really not easy, like. Jimmy and the crew have almost filled Amity's hold. He's starting to think of home. Only a face a mother could love looking back at me. The crew know their skipper's habits. He usually tells us to haul before, or we're going to be heading to shore. Start singing a lot quickly. You get in and get, you see him getting all excited. Oh, he's uh, shaving. You smell him. We always fancy deodorants on. Coming out through the porthole. He must be cleaning the wheels. So that's a sign telling us we're going home after this haul. He usually doesn't tell us till the very end, like, but he'll probably come out during this haul and tell us, Hey, old boys, this is the last haul. Ha, ha, ha. He makes such a mess of it. Spoiled cups of tea and... Chocolate biscuits, crumbs all the place, that's how he's going to clean it. Sandwiches to the floor and stuff like that, okay? Maybe if I make too good a job here, I didn't expect you to do it at home as well. If Irene spoils him tonight and he hears Irene's voice, he will be away at it. He glamours this Irene's voice. It's been another bad trip for the fruitful harvest. They've returned to port with just 50 boxes of fish. Not enough. Sandy's got to work out how to stop his mounting losses. There is another way that some fishing boats get by in lean times. Oil companies pay boats to guard against other trawlers damaging their pipelines. It's guaranteed cash, but it's not fishing. Sandy's decided to let the fruitful harvest go on an oil job without him. As boats, if one will ever been out since I would skip or maybe three times with me not present, and um you tend to worry about the boat all the time. But uh, this is why I'm doing this maintenance. We'll do this and just get everything that I feel possible to make their lives easier. Jimmy's landed his huge haul of prawns. He's looking forward to a big payday. That's just been back in Peterhead for less than an hour. The prawns are being processed. Everybody's going full speed. Probably within another hour they're going to be out that door and on their way to Europe for someone to enjoy. The time has arrived for the fruitful harvest to leave port and head for the oil rigs. Hey, Chris. Well, this boy. I'm going to be babysitting for the next. Sandy's brought his daughter and grandson to help keep his spirits up. This is actually the little fishing they'll be doing for the next 14 days. So. This is for John. He's he comes fishing with me when we're not there. Uh, at sea fishing, he goes fishing uh, on shore. Well, John, I took doing my road as well, so that's, that's fine. That's actually 
Twin wing. <laughs> Twin wing, yes. I think he definitely needs a break. He's, he's been quite stressed out. He's got a really good crew for the first time in a long time and he wants to hang on to them. <laughs> so I think it'll be good for him to get a break. Although we'll be watching this one for the next two weeks. <laughs> Oh, this is not, this is not a good feel. Oh dear. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> that was Seagram. Seagram this point. Oh, it's a win. Here we go. Well, there. Uh, oh, we're perfect. <laughs> Really, really quite sad at the minute, it's just... <laughs> at the restaurant, they're discussing how much longer Jimmy and Sandy will go to sea. I, I never really thought I would stop it in a stall, wouldn't I say? thinking much about it. In fact, I'm probably thinking about it less now with, with, with young John being aboard the boat. At 47, Jimmy is younger than Sandy. Even so, Irene has doubts about his commitment to fishing. He says that it's still the 40. Then he says it's got the 45. Oh. I know you're probably looking at 50. Me personally, I don't know, I think he'll go as long as 50. Honestly. Honestly. I don't think so. I think he'll get back up really soon. Just weeks later, Jimmy's still taking the Amity out to sea. It's a different story on fruitful harvest. The poor fishing has led to Sandy losing half his crew. For boats like fruitful harvest, it's harder and harder to compete with modern vessels. Sandy's had to face facts. After more than 30 years at sea, he's decided to pack up fishing for good. I spoke to Skipper a few years ago and it says, I, I talked about retiring. And he says, you can't think of retiring yet, you're a young man. And I says, well, when do you know? He says, when, he says, when you're not going to see with a passion. And I says, yes, but when's that? He says, you will know. I've been aboard this 27 years. I mean, that's a lot of my life. This boat is more than a business. This boat is an extension of me. I mean, this boat is everything. I can't, uh, I can hardly speak about it. <laughs> it's just been my whole life in there. Uh, I mean, dumping your back at something you love is, uh, it's not easy. Ten years ago, almost 500 trawlers were working from these ports. Today, more than half those skippers have been forced to give up their way of life. Barely 200 are still fishing, like their fathers and their grandfathers and their forefathers who founded the fishing communities in which they live. The trollmen brave the wildest weather and the fiercest seas. They enjoy the good times and endure the hard times. <laughs>